Hmm. Got a haircut today, you know? Not really sure what to do with it yet. I'm not used to having shorter hair. Like, it's so drafty back here right now. I don't... Do, do we go this road with it? Or maybe to go down this route? Or maybe do a little bit of this? Or do we just do this? Yeah, let's let's just keep it with that. Yeah, I'm, I don't even know if I like that, but let's just ride it out. Okay. So, hey everybody, how you doing? Teching here with another Bleach video in 2019. It's almost 2020! <laughs> I'm scared too, guys, but no, uh, last week I made that video on Benihime, uh, this is basically a follow-up to the Gote 13 Zanpakuto series I did earlier this year, we spotlighted those Zanpaktos, but there's a few other that are kind of of interest that I really wanted to bring up, so Benihime, Urahara's sword was definitely one of them, and the other big one I wanted to discuss was Shinji Hiroko's Zanpakuto, Sakanade, Counterstroke, which just by itself, pretty cool name for a sword, right? Actually, it kind of sounds like you're casting a spell on somebody, like, oh my god, they're having a stroke, call 911! Actually, you know what? Hold on, I got the spell Counter-Stroke, we'll be okay. Counter-Stroke! And he's like, oh, okay, I'm all better, thanks, buddy, no problem. Alright, so here's the deal. Um, the Bleach light novel series, I'm sure plenty of you are aware of them, they are Bleach, Can't Fear Your Own World. It's a light novel series with illustrations by Taito Kubo that focus mostly on Shuhei Asagi, okay, and this has been running for a while now. I think we're up to like the third volume and it's also in chapters. So I think we're up to like the 23rd chapter and like the third volume and these have been running for a while. In fact, I just saw a news article a couple weeks ago that uh, Can't Fear Your Own World was going to get a translation by, like an official one by Viz and be sold in the States next year, I think, in the summer of 2020. I think that was aimed for. So if that happens and I can pick it up at my local Barnes & Noble or whatever, I'll check it out, okay? Um, now the, the writer of the light novel series is not Taito Kubo. It's uh, Ryugo Narita, who many of you might actually know, he's the mangaka of Durarara and Bakano, um, but he also does a lot of Bleach light novel work, okay? He did Can't Fear Your Own World, of course, and he also did uh, The Spirits Are Forever With You! One and two. So, he's a really well-versed in the Bleach universe, and he has, you know, Taito Kubo there to kind of help him out with stuff whenever I'm sure he needs some, like, extra information. You know, Kubo helps him out, and Kubo provides the, um, the illustrations, okay? So, all the illustrations I'm gonna show you were drawn by Kubo himself, all right? Now, as I said before, you know, I, you know, everyone always asks me, you know, why don't you review the light novels? Why don't you even read the light novels? You know, even though there's not an official English translation yet, like in stores, you can find translations of them on the wiki and other places. You know, I'm always like, man, I, I would really love, I mean, I like the concept of what you're doing here. I just want to see this stuff in the manga, but it's one of those things where you just kind of have to be like, you know, you kind of get what you want, man. You can't always get what you want, Matt, so you're just going to have to go along with it, okay? And the whole reason I'm bringing this up, and the whole reason I'm talking about Shinji now, though, is because in one of the most recent chapters of Can't Fear Your Own World, I believe chapter 19, uh, we get the reveal of Shinji's Bankai. That's right. Um... <laughs> Wow, right? Okay, because that was one of the big questions I had by the end of the story. I knew going into the end of Bleach, we weren't going to get to see every single captain's, every single vice captain's Bankai. I knew that was going to not happen, right? Um, but I expected, okay, I didn't even expect Kenpachi's Bankai to be 100% with you. I thought we were going to end out the series with no Kenpachi Bankai, and I would have been cool with that. We got to see a Shikai, we got to see Nozarashi, what it does. I, don't, I didn't really need to see his Bankai, but we got that, and I'm, I'm happy that Kubo did that. But I thought, all right, we definitely got to see Uahara's, which we did, which I covered last week, and we also definitely got to see Shinji's, um, and we don't, unfortunately. Now, there is a reason for that. There is a reason revealed in the Can't Fear Your Own World light novel on why he didn't reveal his Bankai. Not just in the final battle, like, with Aizen and the fake Harakura, because that was a big question, because there was a moment there where Shinji and Aizen were going mano a mano, one on one. In fact, Shinji was the first character in this story to injure Aizen. He gets that award, and no one can take that away from him, okay? Shinji's badass. I love the way he looks. I love the way he talks. I love his sense of sarcasm, his sense of humor, the fact he just likes to screw with you. I just love that, right? His sense of fashion is marvelous. He's a big jazz fan, you know, in a time like 100-something years ago where jazz didn't even exist. That's how much of a big fan he is of jazz. He liked it before it was even a thing, you know? Um, and yet he dresses like a hipster, so whatever. It's cool. It's fine, Shinji. It's cool. It's whatever. Um, all right, so we, we get to find this out, though. Why he didn't use it against Aizen. Why didn't he use it at Fake Kurakura? And even more higher stakes than, you know, 
about fake Karakura was the Thousand Year Blood War arc with Yuha in the Quincy's. Yeah, sure, Aizen was trying to wipe out the Gote and get the freaking Oaken and, you know, go and kill the Soul King and everything like that, but Yuha actually achieved that. Yuha actually got into the Soul Palace and actually did slay the Soul King, which I believe that is also expanded upon, by the way, also in Can't Fear Your Own World. That's because that takes place after the events of Bleach. So I really got to sit down and read like a whole translation of that or just wait until they come on sale next year in the States um, because it does reveal like, here's what happened to Yoroichi and Urahara and Nell and Grimjown. Here's what happened with the Soul King and all that stuff. So it, it's it, the answers are there. It's just they're not in manga format. So mm, what are you what are you going to do? You really can't do anything about that, honestly. There, But it's like, why didn't Shinji use his Bankai against Yuha? Because this was like world ending level stuff. This was like literally do or die. Quincy's are wiping out the whole Soul Society, remaking it to their leisure, and then taking over the Soul Palace, and then remaking that into the Varvelt. So it's like, come on, Shinji, if there was ever a time to bust out your Bankai, this would be the time to do it. Well, we get an explanation, and you know what? It actually makes sense. It actually does. I gotta be honest with you. Um, but before we get into the Bankai, let's just deal with the Shikai. Let's deal with the stuff that we already know and love about Shinji's sword, and then we'll get to that. All right, so Shinji, first time he was introduced in the story, he dropped quite a few hints of what his bon of his Shikai's power was. Um, his first uh, appearance, I believe, he was kind of like observing Ichigo fighting a hollow, and he was kind of floating in the middle of the air. Now, being a Shinigami, floating in the air in the human world, in the world of the living, that's not not unusual, um, but the fact he was floating upside down was unusual. Not just that he was floating upside down, he was also drinking a bottled water, and the bottled water was also upside down, like, and he was, like, setting it down next to him as he was floating upside down over him. And then later, when he is infiltrating Ichigo's school as a transfer student, you know, which, by the way, if you exist in the world of anime and you get any sort of transfer student, pay attention to them. They are either going to be your best friend for life, they're going to help you defeat the great evil. They are the great evil. They're a sexy girl from the city that's deciding to live a nice farm life out in the country. So it's like you pay attention to the transfer students, right? Um, but no, Shinji introduces himself to the class by writing his name on the chalkboard, pretty normal, but he writes it backwards. All right. So yeah, that kind of gives us some hints what they are. But yeah, suffice it to say, it takes us a little while until we finally find out what his Zonpakuto can do. It was during the fake Karakura Town arc. A little bit of refresher on that. All the Gote 13 captains get beaten down by the Espada. They're going Resurrection. Shunsui's down. Ukitake's down. Fura's there. Wanderweiss is there. Whole storm of Gileons. Izuru's on the ground like, oh no, is this the end? What are we going to do? And then boom, the saviors at the last minute arrive. The Visards. And they slay all the Gileons in one fell swoop. And then they tag team up with the captains to fight against the Espada anew and Shinji and Aizen face in an epic stare down, right? Um, and it makes sense because, you know, um, Aizen used to be Shinji's subordinate. He used to be the vice captain of Squad 5 under uh, Hiroko back during, you know, Turn Back the Pendulum and all that. So Shinji has this little moment with Aizen, you know, where he's like looking at him and he's like, you know what, Aizen? I never trusted you. You know, the reason I made you my vice captain wasn't because I liked you. It wasn't because I knew about your abilities or anything. It was just because I thought you were a weaselly bastard and I wanted to keep an eye on you. Um, you know, and that's also the reason I never revealed to you what my Zanpakuto's true ability was. You know, and, and Shinji thinks this is going to be an advantage for him. He's like, oh yeah, you don't know what to expect so I can get the jump on you, the element of surprise and all that. Um, Aizen's response to this is very Aizen though. He's just like, ah, Captain Hiroko. It matters not if I know what ability your, you know, small time Zompakto can do. It matters not because I'm Aizen. I'm automatically better. You know, Big Whoop, want to fight about it? <laughs> and basically, he's like, Aizen's like, you, you think oh, that's cute. You think you have the element of surprise on me. So Shinji just kind of like, you know what, screw this. And he releases his sword for the first time against Aizen. Tauru, collapse. Suck a nut, eh? Boys, deal a red eye this year, feel a render, fires, chambers, and this no pad, you know, dude! I ain't airing ass, not a waster, not a drop house, and I can muster half an airing at the whole other line, you're going to eat it for the defense, so the little ones in the row, hurry to be, yell the real house, so it's in the rich head mouse, it must be fierce, and I had a sure if there was, as I could find airing ass, not a waster, not a huge zero, and as this nest, and then I'll hurry to work, city to live by, if her, but, sells its heat, not if she has, the hours is a lie, it's a pot, or if she has, subtler, or if she has, 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 or if she
Okay. So, uh, yeah, you could probably just ignore all that stuff there. No issue there, right? Um, okay. So, yeah, Sakanade, though, uh, to reiterate, it's an ability that allows you to create the inverted world. Uh, first off, just the appearance of the Shikai is pretty baller. I love it. I love the fact the blade itself doesn't really change much. Um, it just gets a little bit more razor edge, like it looks a little sharper if it was gonna, like, maybe Shinji could use it to shave if he wanted to. Uh, it has these rings that are along the blade. I'm not really sure what those are for, other than just looking cool, like, aesthetic-wise. Um, the real main attraction, the thing that changes, is the uh, the hilt. Uh, part of the hilt is still there, but also this like large metal ring is created. And the ring is cool because Shinji can just like he can grab it like just the regular handle, and he could swing it around like that. But he doesn't even need to do that. He just needs to place his hand in the center of the ring and the sword will literally float around his hand like it's like the center of gravity, and I just really love that. It makes for a really unique design. Um, the design of the sword itself uh, might aid in the spread of this inverted world, because every time he releases his sword, this like pink mist or this fog begins to just emanate off of the blade, and I'm, I'm assuming that when the blade is spinning like that, it's like a fan blowing this uh, mist around, and Shinji remarks on how, ah, this is such a nice scent in the air, is it not? And then anybody that inhales this uh, enters the inverted world, the upside-down realm. Not the upside-down from Stranger Things. You know, there's a few less demogorgons in this one. This inverted world is pretty much the exact same inverted world as... Uh, the same world as ours, except flipped and, you know, reversed, okay? So, I don't think I really need to explain to you what the inverted world does. I mean, I could just show you and you could kind of understand. Also, in the anime, whenever he goes into it, there's like a bunch of random video game sound effects in the background when he does it. He's like, welcome to the inverted world, eyes," And then it's like, whoop, 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 beep, beep, boop, beep, boop. I'm like, okay, it's like a very alien realm. It's actually, here's a question for you. Is he actually creating a different dimension or is he just making his opponents trip the hell out with the fog or with the mist? Because it seems to imply anybody that inhales this mist is under the spell of Sakanade and the way they perceive the world is the inverted world. It's not like Shinji's actually creating like a separate pocket universe or something and locking people inside of it. It just seems like he's messing with their heads. You know, he's rewiring their brains to, rece to receive information reversed, okay? So, um... At first, Aizen thinks it's nothing more than just a parlor trick. It's just like, oh, okay, so you're flipping everything upside down. That's not a big deal. I'm fine with it. And, of course, though, when they clash, Aizen is the one to get hurt. He gets the first slash on the side. He's the first person to ever get hurt. Um, I mean, first person to ever injure Aizen with Shinji, like I said. So that's, that's a big accolade right there. I mean, I remember reading that chapter when it first came out, and I was like, oh. <gasps> That's so cool! You know, like, he did it! Because up until that point, Aizen had literally not been touched by, like, anybody. Shinji was the first, and it was like, holy crap, that's awesome. You know, the closest anybody got to actually hurting Aizen up to that point was when Ichigo took Tensuzongetsu at Sokyoku Hill, and he went to go hit him, and it, the blade did technically connect with Aizen, but Aizen just grabbed it, like, pinched it like this, and just slashed Ichigo in half, like, almost in half, like, 99%, he was almost in half, you know, so this was really cool to see. And uh, Shinji explains, he goes into further detail of what the sword actually does, it's not just a simpler ma magic trick where it just flips everything upside down, he's like, you don't understand. Up is down, sure, but also uh, left is right, back is front. All of this gets reversed. So if I'm coming at you from in front of you to slice you from right to left, shing, in the inverted world, I'm coming at you from behind to slash at you left and right. But your body is reversed too. It's like stacking on layers upon layers of layers of, you know, sensory, you know, you know, screwery. You know, that's basically what it is. It's just like there's so much going on here, so many different ways to process reality that you're not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to be able to counter this properly. Um, and that was definitely true. Uh, it's funny because you think Aizen was just like, oh, I don't care what his ability is. He's not going to be able to touch me with it. And Shinji managed to touch him with it. Now, Aizen plays it cool, and he just rides it out, and he's just like, oh, well, yes, um, you were able to injure me, but it matters not. You know, it's like, because Aizen's comeback was like, your Zanpakuto only um, affects the sense of sights. 
and that's it. My Zanpakuto Kyokasugetsu affects all senses, so mine's clearly better. It's basically just like, oh yes, um, yes, yours is pretty good, but it just affects one sense. I can affect all five, Shinji. I mean, come on now. I mean, mine's clearly better. Um, and Aizen, of course, being Aizen, did manage to get around it at some point. They actually managed to screw everybody over later when they were doing that big group fight, and, you know, Shinji reversed everything, and Toshiro was gonna just go run it right through Aizen, and Aizen screwed it with everybody by using Kyokasugetsu, and then Momo was there, and everything. Actually, that brings up a really important point, though, when Shinji did that, because it makes it very useful to fight in groups, because not everybody is forced into the inverted world. It's whoever Shinji, like, chooses to be sent there is sent there, okay? So he can actually choose, like, okay, Toshiro, you're sensing reality perfectly normally, but Aizen is the one that's getting everything flipped and reversed and upside down, so that was actually very useful. If it was anybody other than Aizen, that battle would have definitely ended right there with Toshiro, you know, stabbing the person in question, right? Um... I was also thinking something that could have made his Shikai even stronger, and maybe he would have been able to do this, maybe not, I'm not sure, is if he would be able to willingly turn on and turn off certain inversions. So, for example, let's say he was fighting you, which is like up is down, left is right, back is front. Let's say you did, though, start to kind of get accustomed to that and start to process. What if um, Shinji could choose to be like, okay, well, I'm going to switch it around now, so... Back in front, that is normal, but left and right are still reversed, up and down is still reversed, but I'm only going to reverse one particular aspect, or like we're changing them back to normal, back to inverted, normal, inverted, normal, inverted, and if you just keep switching it, like shuffling it like, like cards in a deck, you know, that would even mess with your senses even more. Although Shinji was pretty damn confident that like the first time seeing this, the first time dealing with this inverted world ability, there is no way in hell anybody would be able to process that on the fly. Shinji was absolutely certain of that, right? And for most people, that would be true. And like I said, even with Aizen, it wasn't technically true. Aizen did get hit the first time. It's just that you give Aizen basically just time, time and a cookie, and he could somehow destroy the entirety of the universe. <laughs> you know, if it just that that's Sosuke Aizen, right? So that was that, and uh, he unfortunately does not use his Zanpakuto that many times through the rest of the story in the manga. Uh, he uses it at the group fight with Aizen. After that, he gets defeated. We don't get to see it anymore after that. Um, we don't get to see it during the Fullbringer arc. He doesn't really show up there until the very, very end. He does use it during the last arc, the Thousand Year Blood War arc, where he's going up against Bambietta Basturbine, Sturmritter E, the Explode. And he uses it there with Komamura. They're kind of doing a tag battle, and it seems like he's on the he's got the upper hand at first. Then Bambietta does uses her Volt Standig and uses her Explode to like maximum capacity. So it's just like it doesn't matter if you reverse up, down, left, right, blood, whatever, east, west, north, south. It doesn't matter what you reverse, because my power is literally the explode. I'll just explode everything. You know, so that's a major weakness Sakanade has. It's if he's going against uh, somebody that has just an omnidirectional attack where Bambietta can just snap her fingers and the entire ground around them for a decent distance will just boom, just explode. Doesn't really matter if it's flipped or not, Shinji's still gonna get hit, you know? So that was the last time we got to see it. And then even after they get to the uh, the VAR Velt, Shinji really doesn't have that much action during that time. And, uh, you know, the series just kind of ends with Shinji just being like, all right, well... Didn't really get to do much, but I lived. <laughs> I lived. That's something you can't say to Unohana. You know, I made it out of this arc. You know, I'm good. I, I, yeah, Uketake died. I'm still alive. So Shinji, I guess, good job. Now, let's talk about his Bankai, though. That was revealed. All right. Now, his Bankai is, and I have it written over here. Just I, I, I haven't committed this one to memory yet. Sakashima Yokoshima Hapo Fusagari. And there's actually two different translations I've seen of this. A wicked inverted blockade from all directions and eight sealed treasures of malevolent reversal. Uh, so both of those are really freaking epic. I, li I like the both names of those. Um, so yeah, Hakushima, Yokoshima. Nope, can't remember it. Hapo Fusagari. I'll commit that to memory. Just give me a little while. This is what it looks like, okay? And once again, this is a Taito Kubo illustration for the light novel uh, by Ryogo Narita, uh, Can't Fear Your Own World. Okay, chapter 19 in case you're curious. Okay. So, we see Shinji hanging out here, and it seems like he's standing on some sort of platform. At first glance, I looked at it. I originally thought, from just first impressions, I thought it was taking the circle from Sakanade and making it into, like, a giant circle that he's standing in. Not very accurate with that. Think of it as a flower. 
Okay, so there's the, the center of the flower, the bud of the flower, I guess, and that's what Shinji is standing on. And then the petals of the flower are kind of all around him. I'm not really sure if these petals and this bud take on the appearance of, like, Reiatsu, where they're, like, kind of intangible energy that's floating around him, or it actually creates, like, a physical, tangible space. Like, you know, this is like a golden flower he's standing in the center or whatever, okay? But... Here's what his ability does, okay? And after I explain this to you, you'll begin to understand why he didn't use it during the last arc against the Quincy's, okay? Because I did see an explanation of this a few places. You know, when Shinji's Bankai was going to be revealed in the Can't Fear Your Own World Light novel, there were a lot of explanations like, you know, oh, this is the reason he didn't use his Bankai. It was so strong, it was banned to be used. I did not care for that explanation at first. I thought that was kind of a cop-out, if anything, because I'm looking at that, and I'm like, because we don't know what the ability is yet. We know now, but this was before. And I'm looking at that like, really? That's the bullshit reason you're giving me? You know, it was too strong, so it was banned. I'm like, once again, I'm like, Quincy's literally ripping the fabric of reality apart. Yuha, killing God. <laughs> And then taking universes and smashing them all together, you know, so I'm sitting there I'm like, okay, how ridiculously OP does this thing have to be right for him to not use it? Well, here's the thing Saying that it's too strong is Not really accurate. It is and it isn't it's not that it's just so ridiculously OP strong. It's that it's massively incredibly inconvenient to use. That's the reason why he didn't do it. The ability of Shinji's Bankai is not just the reversal of senses, it's the reversal of uh, everything, really. Uh, let, me, let me clarify in a more simple way. Um, when he uses his Bankai, enemies become allies, allies become enemies that sense of reversal. It, it reverses the flow of their cognition. People see the world in the opposite way that they've always seen it. It's an alignment changing ability to use D&D &D terms. You know, I think there's even like as uh, the deck of many things in D&D &D, for anybody that knows that reference. I think there's a card. I think it's the balance card in the deck of many things that reverses your alignment. You know, lawful goes to evil. I mean, lawful goes chaotic. Good goes to evil. It reverses you on the alignment, you know, spectrum. That's basically what Shinji's Bankai is. Uh, you know, Sakashima, Yokoshima, Hapo, Fusagari. All right. That's what it does. Not a very convenient truth. Not a very useful power. First off, it's completely useless in one-on-one -on -one fights. That's even explained. It's like you can't even use it in a one-on-one -on -one fight, all right? Um, you basically have to use it when you're fighting groups, which would be great, except you can't use it when any of your allies are around, similar to Shunsui's, because Shunsui doesn't like to use his Bankai either. Shins Shunsui only used his Bankai when he was damn sure he was the furthest away from all of his comrades as much as possible, and then he activated his Bankai. Um, but the reason Shunsui didn't want to activate his Bankai is because the effects of his play, his, his axe, you know, anyone that's in the bounds of the Riatsu of Katen Kyokatsu is, you know, affected by it. So that's why I wanted to get away. Um, but not really so much because it affects them, you know, emotionally, it affects them physically with Shunsui's because it does that whole act with like the drowning in the abyss and then the diseases and all that stuff. He wanted to make sure nobody else fell victim to that. So that's why he had to get away. Sh uh, Shinji's is different in the sense that it affects you emotionally and it warps your sense of reality, okay? So, if he were to use his Bankai, like, let's say, you know, uh, you have Yuha there and his Quincy's, and then you had your allies behind you, you had Momo there, and you had all your, you know, Gote helping you out, and Shinji activated his Bankai, um, you know, that would just make all of the Gote, like, evil. That would make all the Gote, like, you know, oh, you know, Shinji's our enemy now, you know, like, we're, we're freaking evil bastards now. And the Quincy's would turn good. The Quincy's would become your allies, but your allies would become your enemies. And not only that, like, in a general sense, the big, you, the, the only application to this Bankai, from what I can see, is that it basically resorts to your enemies just killing each other. That's the point of it. Like, if Shinji's facing down an entire organized army coming at him, and he activates his Bankai, then 
sure, all of the enemies will become Shinji's ally, but all of the different members of that group now view each other as enemies. So they just start ripping each other to shreds. You know, they would just go and actually, like, Shinji, go Tay Bastard, we're gonna kill you! And then he activates his Bankai, you know, Sakashima, Yokoshima, Hapa Fusagiri, and then, or Gari, yes, Gari. And he activates it, and all the people coming at him, like, let's say there's a hundred people attacking Shinji at once, a hundred people. Everyone's just like, huh? What? You, you bastard! And then they just start ripping each other apart! You know, like, so the more organized you are, the more good you are at working in a unit. Like, if you are a member of the Gotei 13, if you're a well-oiled machine, like, you know, uh, like Momo and Shinji worked well together, you know, all that stuff there, you know, they would become your worst enemy. And unlike his Shikai, he can't direct this. He can't choose, like, oh, the Gotei doesn't get affected by my Bankai, but the enemy does. No, no, no. It's everybody. It doesn't discriminate, all right? So, that would be a huge, massive inconvenience to use it. All right, so... You know, he activates it on the Quincy's, and the Quincy's just start attacking each other, sure, but also the goatee kind of start attacking each other, and they're like evil now. So, it's like, that's way too much of an inconvenience to utilize. Now, what's up with the flower? Like, the fact he's standing in a flower? Um, it limits his movement. That's another reason why he can't really use it in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Because it limits his movement if... He steps outside of the flower. If he steps off that little platform in the butt of the flower, the Bankai immediately disengages and it ends the effect. Um, the petals of the flower can come up to kind of block attacks. If, you know, if enemies do manage to get through to him, the petals can raise up and block attacks. So he's spent in a, he's, he's stuck in this perfect defensive position where he can't move. I'm not really sure if he could use keto whilst I guess he could as long as he's standing in the butt of the flower He can use keto and whatever, but he can't really fight in a normal way So it limits his movement and it turns his allies against each other. So Yeah, it, it is well calling it an overly strong ability I take umbrage with that simply in the sense that like even Shinji himself notices the ability is kind of weak because you really can't use it all that often, right? Um, he even says, like, my bonka my Shikai and my Bankai are really weird because the Shikai is actually kind of better than the Bankai. The Shikai can be used to take on strong opponents one-on-one. -on -one. The Bankai can only be really used to take down weak opponents. Like, if it's a bunch of, like, ri a rival rival coming at him, like, robber, 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 we're gonna fight you, Shinji, and then Shinji's just, like, Bankai, then they'll all just rip each other to shreds, and then he's like, okay, I didn't even have to lift a finger, you know, and then disengage the Bankai and move on your merry way. But, uh, yeah, if it was other situations you got to be really careful if he used it during fake karakura all the visors would have turned e against each other all the gote would have turned against each other they would all would have become like evil and started attacking each other um the espada would have become shinji's allies but it, it, I, I think just the risk like even if it's like you make your enemies into allies your your allies are like killing each other back here so it's like it's too much of a risk you just can't use it so that's that's the reason um as far as reasons go for a Bankai, I could definitely see that. Although I will say I would have enjoyed them for them to at least mention Shinji's Bankai. You know, even if, okay, even if um, Kubo did create this Bankai for Shinji and he's like, all right, there, that's the reason he's, he can't use it. It's a very inconvenient Bankai. Um, I would have still liked for them to bring it up. Like Momo asking Shinji, like Momo, uh, like like uh, you know uh, Shinji Taicho or Hiroko Taicho, why don't you use your Bankai against you know the giant dude that's crushing us right now or whatever? And and Shinji would just be like, Momo, I can't, I simply can't. You know my my Bankai might have the potential to defeat him, but it would be in the worst way possible. It could defeat him in the sense that he would become my ally and all of you would become my enemies. And I and obviously Shinji wouldn't want that, so that's why he you know held back using it. I, I would have liked something like that, some at least at least a mention of why you can't use it, right? So yeah, I, I was thinking though it was something like you know um, is uh, before this I thought his Bankai maybe did like a body switch thing, you know reverses people's bodies, sort of like um, you know a Silver Chariot Requiem from Golden Wind, you know the Requiem plays quietly and you know, everyone goes to bed and they wake up and they're in other people's bodies and because it reverses that way, but no, it reverses cognition and it reverses your alignment and it reverses you know who you view as an ally and uh, and an enemy 
So that's the reason. Uh, take it or leave it, that's what we get. So anyway, yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, once again, keep an eye out if you're in, you know, uh, the, uh, the States and you're looking to see the uh, light novel series. Apparently that's going to get a release by Viz uh, in the coming year in 2020. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. And let me know about some cool stuff that you could do with Shinji's uh, Shikai and his Bankai. Let me know about that below. All right. Thanks for watching everybody. Teching signing out. Oh, by the way, yeah, Barry's uh, performance evaluation was today. Um, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna keep the, uh, results for that for tomorrow. Tomorrow is actually Shanksgiving, so we got a Shanks video coming up on Shanksgiving, and then after that video, at the end of that video, I think I'll reveal the results of Shinji, of, uh, of, uh, Barry's performance review. Yeah, Barry, Barry, we'll see how you did, Barry. Have a great one, everybody. This will be Teching signing out.